So, at the end of the last disaster, I went ahead and busted off two of the four bolts. And uh, looking back, uh, it was no wonder I broke them off. These are self-tapping bolts. Um, I don't think any amount of care I put into it would have saved them. Uh, the impact wrench certainly didn't help, but uh, I don't think it really matters. We had self-tapping bolts in an aluminum housing uh, that was 12 years old. They're, they're just destined for failure. Uh, and speaking of failure, uh, it, once this thing came out, it was pretty clear to see that a lot of grease had been coming out of here. This is over-greased, probably because of the seal blue. Um, so I'd like to take it apart and check it out. This top bearing doesn't feel too bad. This bottom bearing doesn't feel so great. So I think once this is taken apart, what I'm going to find is this bearing's pretty much shot. This bearing's probably okay, but would have to replace it. However, I'm not sure this thing is worth working on because in the meantime, since the last video, I had discovered that I can buy an aftermarket version of this for around $30, give or take. Um, John Deere has updated this design, I believe, from what I gather, and uh, their new design has a slightly different housing, and instead of using self-tapping bolts, it's got studs, and the studs come up through the bottom of the deck, and you put nuts on them, and that holds everything together. Uh, so my next step is to press this guy apart. Um, had the old ones apart before. They're pretty pretty easy to work on, pretty serviceable. This style is quite a bit different. It's got a cap up here, but I think if I can support support this assembly on these pads here, press against the uh, spindle, I think it'll come right out. So let's give it a shot. Everything's set up in my little press here. So we're going to give it a shot, see what happens. If it breaks, I don't really care. Oh, it's like butter. Oh my gosh. That's probably the easiest thing I've ever experienced as far as taking apart a spindle. Oh my, okay. Yep, there's the top bearing. Here's the bottom bearing. Oh my gosh, it's... No, that's not the bearing. That's just a spacer. Okay. Oh, there's the bottom bearing. Yeah, it doesn't feel very good. This top bearing doesn't feel too bad. Hmm. Well, maybe this is salvageable. It's actually a pretty nice design. Try to just drive the bearing out, the bottom bearing out with a hammer and a screwdriver. There's a bushing in there to offset that I gotta try to work around. And it's out. A lot of good molly grease in there. Oh yeah, that's pretty sloppy. Camera can't pick it up, but it's got several thousands worth of play in it. Okay, this is built about like I expected. Uh, it's got, it's a caged roller, of course. Um, no seal on the inside so the grease can get to it, sealed on the outside. So as you grease it, it packs grease in here, uh, in the cage. And then if you over-grease it, it comes out here. Simple. So here I've got the two bearings that came out of that spindle. This is the bearing from the top, this is the bearing from the bottom. Take a look at them. No seal, seal, so the grease stays in. Seal. And another seal. So you might ask, why would they have a seal in a spindle that you can grease? And the answer is, so whatever grease is in here doesn't come out. 
as it runs, it heats up, the grease goes to the bottom of the housing because after all, it's warming up. This seal gets lots of lube, naturally, because it's open. But this seal, once it gets warm, that grease runs out. This one's destined for failure sooner than this one. Now, my opinion is probably a very unpopular one, uh, but I am not necessarily a fan of the greasable spindles for this reason. This is a sealed unit. That grease is going to stay in there until you know, it reaches its end of life, whatever that may be. This one, however, this grease is going to come out uh, either one of two ways. One, someone over-greases it, pressurizes the cavity, and blows the grease out. Or two, uh, as many homeowners don't do, grease, they don't grease it at all. So in that, in that state, you're better off having a sealed bearing. Uh, it's, still, it's still good to grease it, uh, don't get me wrong, but um, I think people fall into one of two camps. They either won't grease it at all, and that's probably the average suburbanite homeowner, or they grease it too much. Um, I would probably tend to fall into the, la the latter category uh, because uh, I grew up on a farm greasing the heck out of stuff all the time, and you knew it had enough grease in it when the grease started coming out of the lip seals. So... Given that, uh, you can't really grease these things that same way. Uh, it just doesn't work. They're going to end up failing. On the plus side, though, someone who was using, was using a good um, molly grease in these, and I think that, that probably helps quite a bit. Um, another thing I've noticed about these bearings is they're, they're really small. Uh, I've been used, about the past year or so, I've been used to using, um, I'm sorry, working with the larger bearings and the older older mowers, and I, I think those were about a, about a two inch bearing, uh, maybe on a one, di one inch diameter shaft, I don't know. These are considerably smaller. Overall, I think it's okay if they're smaller. Um, don't know if it affects their life or not, their lifespan. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But um, it's just kind of the shape of things in any industry. Um, businesses are continually making things smaller, lighter, cheaper, uh, so that uh, it doesn't affect their bottom line so much. And as everybody says, they don't build them like they used to. Hey everybody, I just wanted to give an update on the spindle. Um, <clears throat> what we see here is old versus new. Uh, I went ahead and visited the local deer place and got the updated design spindle. And overall, I can say I'm fairly impressed with it. Um, I looked it over before I bought it and was impressed enough to go ahead and get it. Um, it was about $55. Uh, while it's true that I could have got an aftermarket version of this older style for less, probably $20 less, um, after thinking about it for a while, I realized this will fit right the first time. Uh, it's got updated fasteners. Uh, these studs will just slide up through the deck and nuts will go on. I don't have to fight with self-tapping bolts or anything like that. And uh, I, just, I just know it's right and it'll work the first time. So given that, I figured it was worth it. Um, one big difference is the grease zerk is up top instead of coming out the side. And uh, I guess it's maybe easier access, but getting the grease gun under the deck or under the tractor between the deck and the tractor might be a challenge. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and assume it's packed with grease uh, from the beginning, from the start. So, um, yeah, we'll go for it. I don't know. I might put a couple pumps in there because uh, I do what I do. <laughs> so uh, it was also really nice that this, this comes with all the fasteners you need. Now we've got a whole kit of, uh, we got the nuts that go on the studs and we got a nut that holds the blade on and a big washer. Uh, one big difference other than the Zerk was the, uh, the studs that hold the blade on. This one's uh, smaller, probably, oh, I don't know, 7 16 half inch or something like that. Uh, this one's considerably larger, which I like. So, um, Blade still goes on just fine. The uh, blade pilots on that star feature, but uh, should work better in my opinion. Dimensionally, they're the same, of course, 
and I should be able to use this new one with the old one that's on the deck now that uh, is still in good shape. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and use it, I'm gonna install it, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. All right, let's see how it goes. So the torque spec for these guys is only 20 foot bounds. That's not very much, but I'll torque them anyway. Oh yeah, that's much nicer than before. <laughs> 